Hey folks, Duger Dads here. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today is kind of a special video. One, because I'm doing an unboxing, and two, I want to talk about D-Day. Today is the second, sec, 72nd anniversary of the D-Day, June 6, 1944. And the unboxing I'm doing is kind of related to that. Before I get into that, uh, I would like to thank uh, Exploring Alabama for sending me this item. Uh, he kind of, he does magnet fishing and metal detecting and he's a fellow YouTuber by the way. I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. And uh, he, he just does fun videos with his family. He's just a really cool little guy to watch. Well, in one of the videos he did... He was uh, magnet fishing a creek that was near an old fort. And while he was exploring this, this creek, he found everything. A lot of artifacts that he found were from World War I all the way up to today. In fact, uh, the item he found from World War I was a live training round this big i mean it was not a little bullet it was a big big uh training round and police and fire had to be called they had to cordon off the area and have a bomb squad squad come in and remove it it's a great watch one of the best videos he's done uh, i'll post a link to his channel so that you can check him out i really do enjoy him but what I'm going to do first, I'm going to get into the unboxing, and then I'll talk about D-Day. And uh, not a very big box, as you can see. Um, but what's inside it is related to World War One. Excuse me, World War Two. World War Two. That's what we're talking about today. And the knife I'm going to use to open this box was uh, owned by a gentleman who served in World War II and Korea. And we had moved into the house that he had owned and went through an attic and I found a bunch of stuff and this is one of the items that I found. And it's a cool knife, it's got a big, well, I guess I could show it to you real quick. It's got a big spike on it. And everyone that I've talked to said that this is a shell ejector don't know if it's true or not, but the only examples of it I found were uh, ones that were carried by Navy personnel during World War II, but the, the ones that they had were single blades. This is a double blade. Uh, this is made by e out of England. This was made the last year they manufactured these. It was in 1950. The uh, company went out of business shortly after that. So it's a kind of a rare knife. But I'm going to use it to open this box. Uh, now, I, he found a lot of stuff going through this creek. Um, pieces of grenades, bayonets, uh, even a whole grenade that he gave to a friend, but I didn't want anything. I, I figured that the items that he found that were evidently military, I knew he would want to keep. So one of the things he found in this creek was a bunch of dishes that was up under a um, tree. And this is one of the items he pulled out from under that tree and it's a lid from a pot and you're thinking why would you want a lid off of a pot? pot? Well if you look, I'll see if you can see it on here, if you look closely at the mint mark it says U.S. Quartermaster Corps and then it has a series of serial numbers which I haven't looked up yet and then it uh, has some more writing on it. Uh, uh, oh, it has a date of 
14, 1940, which means it was made during World War II. Uh, it says something about China. It doesn't say made in. There's a town. I'll have to see what else. And then it says new, looks like it says New Sample, Georgia, if I'm correct. It's got a little bitty boo-boo right here, a, big, a little chip. But other than that, this little lid is almost perfect. So you're wondering, why would I want this? It, to, to you, it may be a piece of trash, but to me, it's a piece of World War II history. If you think about all the men who were training at this nearby fort, and I believe um, Exploring Alabama said the name of the fort in the video. I think he said it was Fort McClellan. And... Um, if you think about all the men who were training at Fort McClellan, who had touched this handle, and then you wonder how many of them didn't make it back. Well, that's why I wanted to do this uh, unboxing on D-Day, so that we remembered those who part not only served in the armed forces, but took part in that operation and uh, whenever he sent me this it made me think about my own family and I had a lot of family who served in that war in fact I'm still finding family members who served in the war and it, it baffles me to know how many have served in that war but so far I've only found know of two relatives who served in that war and did not come back. And for D-Day, I want to honor their memory by telling you a little bit about them. Because they were very young. I was surprised at how young these men were. And then you got to ask yourself, would you have done the same thing? And, you know, I'm proud of my country and I think I would have and I even tried. I tried to go into the Marines. As you can see, I'm a little partial to the Marines. But uh, because I, I wanted to go into the Marines after high school, but they wouldn't let me serve because of a disability. That's another story. But um, let's get right into these gentlemen that I want to talk about. The first one is on my mom's side of the family. His name is, he is, his name is Lauren Wayne Watson. He was a private first class in the United States Army, served in the 345th Infantry, uh, 87th Division. Uh, as far as I know, from what, I've, from what I've been told, that was part of Patton's Third Army. I haven't been able to verify that yet. Um, he was killed in Germany in 1945, and yes, that was while they was trying to take over the city or Germany. I don't know if it was in Berlin, but there was some heavy fighting all throughout Germany. He was only 19 when he was killed. 19. And my great-grandparents had four boys, or five boys, two girls. Out of those children, four of them served in World War II. Uncle Wayne was the only one who did not come back. And not only did he leave behind the fam his mom and dad and all his brothers and sisters, but he left behind a fiance as well. Her name is Nadine Stice, and I have a picture of them together. And it's sad to know that he never got to live his life. Um, he, he was an artist that was, had a very good hand at it. Uh, I have some of his drawings and it's, it's unimaginable to think, or well, I should say it's hard to think what his life would have been like had he lived. And it was cut so, so short. Um, the other family member I want to talk about is someone on my dad's side of the family who I didn't even know about. Um, on that side of the family, they really don't 
talk about certain lines of family. I don't know why. I don't know because there's a disconnect there, but uh, this gentleman's name is Oscar Oscar Eugene Sappington. He was my great grandmother's brother. He was the youngest of all the children. Um, he was only 20 years old when he died. Uh, he served in the U.S. Army, Private First Class. He was in Company C of the 309th Infantry, 78th Division. He was also killed in Germany. And I, uh, Nordheim, Westfalen, Germany is where he was killed. And he received a Purple Heart. Oh, by the way, let me go back a minute. My Uncle Wayne received a Purple Heart. My Uncle Oscar, Oscar Eugene Sapperton, not only received a Purple Heart, but he received a Bronze Star, which is the third highest, if I remember, I think it's the third or fourth highest award a military officer or a military person could get. And that's pretty darn cool. The sad thing is, is his body has never been recovered. He is still missing. He is, he is listed on a plaque in the American Cemetery and Memorial, or the Henri Chapel American Cemetery and Memorial in Liege, Belgium. And I hope one day he will be brought back home so that he can receive a proper burial and he can be remembered by the family he still has. Um, it's sad to think these men had to give their lives so that we could be free. And my son, his full name is Ethan Wayne Green. He was named after my Uncle Wayne. Many of my family members have named their children Wayne because he was very, you know, he died so young, he didn't get a chance to have a family. So we wanted to honor him by naming our children after him. So in some small way, he could live on. My middle name is Eugene. And whenever I found out that uh, Uncle Oscar's middle name was Eugene, it became special as well. You know, I'm honored to think that even though my mom didn't know it at the time, and neither, you know, to find out that uh, someone that I didn't know, I ended up with part of their name. And I am very honored to have that part of my name. And I, I really do hope that he comes home. And we need to take the time today to remember our servicemen and thank them for the things that they've done for us. Because without them, there would be no freedom. This is Duger Does saying do good. And this is bye-bye.